Senator Ned O'Sullivan. Okay, I, think I, I welcome uh, the government's statement here this, uh, this afternoon, and I particularly welcome the government's decision not to adopt or utilise the term apartheid in relation to Israel, a position which they share indeed with a great number of Western democracies. Cahir, look, last week, Yasser Haddad offered an entirely different perspective on Israeli-Palestinian conflict to what we, to which we have been, to what we have been hearing. Decades and again this afternoon. Yasef is an Arab Israeli. Growing up in a mixed community of Arabs, Jews, and Christians, he experienced no form of segrega segregation or difference whatsoever. He joined the Defense Forces when a local restaurant, which was owned by an Arab Jewish partnership, was blown apart by a Palestinian suicide attack in which 21 people of mixed ancestry were slaughtered. He was in command of Jewish soldiers as an Arab, and he was severely wounded in the South Lebanon War. Yosef is proud of being an Israeli, and it's his strong belief as an Arab that the Amnesty Report entirely misrepresents the lived experience of the non-Jewish community in Israel. Members may be surprised to learn that Arabs serve at the highest level in every sector of life in Israel. For instance, over 50% of all pharmacists in Israel are Arab. Over 30% of all doctors are Arab. Just last week, an Arab Muslim was appointed to the Israeli Supreme Court, which already has judges of the Arab Christian tradition. In all other walks of life, business, the arts, education, and government, indeed, Arabs, both Muslim and Christian, have achieved the highest positions in the land. Are these the characteristics of an apartheid state, I ask you? Like every country, Israel has its flaws and inequalities. But for amnesty to invoke the term apartheid seems to me an abuse of both the English language and of the Israeli state. Apartheid, for most people, describes the obscene system of racial discrimination that was upheld in South Africa for far too long and which is now thankfully consigned to the scrap heap of history. To equate Israel, the one democratic, and no one democratic was mentioned by a senator here, the one democratic and secular state in the entire Middle East, to equate them with what the black and coloured races suffered in South Africa is outrageous, and it's indeed an injustice to the non-white African community. It seems to me that Amnesty, in introducing this flawed report, has greatly damaged its own credibility. <clears throat> Amnesty in the past has not distinguished itself for its fairness to Israel. Some of its prominent spokespersons have been forced to withdraw false allegations about Israel, and I think not even Amnesty themselves would suggest for a moment that they could be seen as a neutral or disinterested voice on the conflict. It is worth noting that Amnesty focused on the Negev region for its survey, the Negev has roughly 100,000 Israeli Arabs, which is 5% of the total Arab Israeli population. How can Amnesty extrapolate a global finding from such a narrow sample? Why did they not include the testimonies and the experiences of Israeli Arabs like Yosef Haddad? Are they not aware of the Harvard University study, which shows that 77% of Arab Israelis would choose to live in Israel above any other country? Does this sound like an apartheid state, I ask you. Another question I want to ask of Amnesty is, does Amnesty believe that the state of Israel actually has a right to exist? It's a question I could put to many people in this country who support the Palestinian cause. I've often heard that question asked of certain people, and they have refused to answer it, because the answer they know will not be acceptable to the Irish people. We are not talking about normal circumstances here. Israel is a small nation, surrounded by people who are sworn to destroy it and who will never agree to any resolution of the conflict other than the extermination of the, Palestine, of the Israeli state. Palestine will be free from the river to the sea, as it chanted we've heard many times outside these gates. It sounds great, but what it means is that Israel is to be wiped off the face of the earth. And will that bring peace if they achieve it to the Palestinian people? Not a chance. 
Hamas, Hezbollah, Fatah, they'll all keep bombing and killing each other. They'll continue to use innocent women and children in the front line for propaganda purposes as heretofore, because, Cahir, look, their differences are far greater than their hatred of Israel, and that's saying something. It's these same groups who inflict the greatest suffering on the Palestinian people, and Amnesty ignores this. Has Amnesty any report on Hamas in Gaza? Has Amnesty any report on the Palestinian Authority in the West Bank? One thing I find quite unacceptable in the current Amnesty advert is the advertising campaign by Amnesty. They ask you to join their anti-Israeli crusade by signing a petition, and if you do, you'll receive a call from them. This is clearly a recruitment and fundraising exercise at the expense of the people of the Middle East. I find it despicable. I withdrew my Amnesty subscription many years ago when I saw what they had to say about this conflict here in this country. If they got that so wrong, can you trust them in anything? There's widespread belief in these house, uh, support in these houses and in my own party for the Palestinian cause. And I too believe in a two-state solution. And I too want to see an end to the suffering of Palestinians. But I'm not blind to the underlying causes. As a member of the new, I, I hope you'll give me a small bit of leave. Uh, I am offering an alternative position here. As a member of the new Ireland-Israel parliamentary friendship group, I look forward to engaging with members on all sides of the House and with members of the Knesset in the months ahead, engaging with Jewish, Christian and Arab members of Parliament. Because, yes, Cahill, look, all creeds can contest elections in Israel, unlike their adversaries, who, of course, don't have any elections at all. And if they did, you can be certain no Jewish man or woman would be allowed on the ballot paper. Regarding women, it's absolutely astonishing that so many of our leading feminists take sides against Israel with people who treat women as slaves, who execute members of the LGBT community, and who in some cases think public raping of what they call inappropriately dressed women is acceptable behaviour. In the door last week, and I'm coming to a conclusion, Kyrick, in the door last week, the Taoiseach referenced Colin McCann's outstanding novel, The Paragon, which was inspired by the real-life experience of two men, one Arab and one Jew, who had both suffered the loss of a daughter. The title refers to a multi-sided shape which reflects brilliantly the actual makeup and the, and, the, and the definition of the conflict that's in uh, Israel. I have no doubt that these heroic men would not appreciate the ham-fisted report of amnesty. They are doing the hard work of building bridges. This report tears them down. To, to finally conclude, Kahiluk, it's time the one-way narrative stopped. Amnesty's dreadful intervention might do something good. It might be the catalyst to open the door to a wider dialogue and hopefully put an end to the simplistic one-way anti-Israel campaign and rhetoric which has blighted reasoned conversation in these houses for too long. Thank you for your indulgence, Cahill. I appreciate it. Uh, Senator Conway. Uh, 